Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much uh, for coming along uh, to the launch of uh, this uh, review. Uh, when we were thinking about uh, this review, I remember talking to somebody who said, why do you need another pensions review? Uh, haven't we you know, resolved a lot of these issues? Well, it's true that you know, if you look at today's um, generation of uh, pensioners, in many ways, they are far better off than their uh, predecessor generations. The pensions credit, which we introduced over 20 years ago, the reforms recommended and accepted by us that Adair Turner and his colleagues um, came up with uh, nearly 20 years ago, um, and clearly uh, the triple lock and other measures, uh, have made a tremendous uh, difference to uh, pensioners' um, income. But of course, this is not about today's pensioners. This is about tomorrow's pensioners, our children and our grandchildren. And when people say, well, that's a long way off, well, that's what we all thought when we were 20, it is a long way off. But there are, are already problems becoming apparent, uh, which if we don't fix now, will be very real problems for that rising, rising generation of uh, young people uh, who themselves uh, will be, of course, taxpayers, uh, but also retired at some stage. Now, I think this, this um, uh, review is absolutely essential, and for the point of view of the Financial Fairness Trust, uh, it, it seemed to be us that the I I uh, IFS were the ideal people uh, to um, do the major part of the work in, in this case uh, because of its reputation. Uh, you know, I always say to people, um, you know, in various election campaigns I've been involved in, uh, the problem with the IFS when it produces something is it's very difficult to criticise it, uh, uh, you know, because they're usually right. Uh, and I think that is quite a tribute to them. Uh, so I think they're the, the right people to be doing this. But why are we doing it now? Well, despite all the changes that have been made over these last years, there are problems that are now emerging uh, which uh, will have serious consequences if we don't deal with them. The first and obvious one is that many people are saving too little for the retirement, less than Adair Turner's report identified 20 years ago. What's worrying, for example, is that one person in five uh, who are self-employed are not contributing anything to a pension. Now, you consider the extension of an expansion of that self-employed group, because there are many more people who are uh, self-employed now. That is a serious question. And for those people who are self-employed continuously, in other words, it's not just one spell in their life, that will have serious consequences if we don't do anything about it. A further problem is there are increasing numbers of people uh, now who are living in rented accommodation and quite possibly will be living in rented accommodation for much of their working life. And when they come to retirement, they'll still need to pay their rent. They'll be in a different position from people who had a mortgage who pay it off perhaps at the end of their working life and then don't have that additional cost uh, throughout their retirement. And of course that in turn exposes another problem which we're not attempting to, uh, to solve in this inquiry and that is for as long as we have a chronic shortage of housing, particularly housing for rent as well as housing to buy, this problem is going to be exacerbated which is why the government needs to deal with it and deal with it soon. There's also another problem that's become exposed, and I'm <clears throat> it was quite right that uh, we and the, uh, the subsequent governments increased uh, the retirement age to take account of longevity. However, that one point that I don't think has been focused on particularly is that if you raise the retirement age, people are going to have to be working longer. Now, especially now, where post-pandemic, a lot of people seem to have come out of the labour market, you know, in their 50s maybe. The question arises, what are they going to be doing uh, between then and whenever the, their retirement age comes up. So it will have an, an impact on that. And the final point that I wanted to highlight is in terms of managing your finances uh, during retirement. And this, I suppose, uh, in relation to the ability to draw down your pension pot comes into sharp focus there. The big problem, of course, is none of us know how long we're going to live for. Uh, if we did, it would be very easy to plan for all these things. Uh, but, you know, you've got, you have this, uh, this quandary, I suppose. Do you live a good life now or do you live a very frugal life now because you might live till you're 95 and you want to eke out the, the pot as best you can? And I suppose it comes down to getting the best advice you can. 
it's worth bearing in mind that um, if you're 66, your life expectancy is uh, 19 years. If you're a man, it's 21 if you're a woman. So it's quite a long time that you've got to make provision for yourselves. So I think the work of this commission is timely. Uh, it's essential because these problems we can see now, never mind what might come our way uh, in, the, in the future, and it's time enough to start looking at these issues again. And the final point that I want to make, which we attach considerable importance to, uh, as evidenced if you look at the steering committee, myself, David and jo Joanne, uh, there's got to be a political consensus on whatever this comes up with. Whatever you do in pensions is going to span several governments, and there has to be a consensus as to what we as individuals do what the state does, the whole question of uh, long-term care, if ever is an example of where political consensus is not exactly broken out yet. These are issues where we do need to work together uh, to come up with a solution. So I'm now going to ask Katie to uh, spell out in more details what the problems are. You will then have the opportunity to listen to uh, my colleagues uh, who are going to explain their thinking, and who knows, you will be able to have an opportunity to contribute some thoughts that one day may actually be the law. There you are. Thank you.